Hello, and welcome back to Jay's Studio. Uh, this will be a wrap-up video uh, for the series on how to calibrate your Area 1 ER20 speak, or, uh, printer uh, to get the best out of it, or at least to get, uh, a, a, or to have a good printing experience uh, that hopefully avoids some of the common problems uh, that might have you running to the internet to ask, hey, what's wrong, what can I do, uh, if we get the printer calibrated well uh, through the steps that we've done to this far are to this point we should be able to print relatively reliably um, in fact uh, while I'm talking to you on this video I'm just kind of leaving the camera focused in on the uh, an ongoing uh, print it should take about 11 hours it's about seven and a half hours into that uh, it's a Mandalorian print that I'm going to give as a gift to my daughter uh, together with um, a little baby Grogu uh, uh, print that I did uh, yesterday um, and it did really well on the print and then I think earlier in the videos I showed several times I showed you one of these test prints to give you an idea of what um, what this printer can do with a vase like object uh, just really beautiful um, uh, beautiful work. Uh, which brings me to another point, which is that uh, this particular filament, which is Airy One's matte blue, uh, matte navy blue filament, I find exceptionally beautiful. Um, there are some challenges with it. Uh, most notably that because it's got that matte uh, finish and, and flavor, uh, your retraction settings and stringing need to be almost perfect because it'll tend to have a little bit of of uh, kind of a dryish, wispy uh, stringing that happens as a result, I think, of the matte material, a little bit more um, prominent than with other filaments. But as far as the way it looks, I mean, I just, you know, even my wife uh, took a look at the vase when it was printed uh, several, you know, several days ago and just was like, wow, that's just a super nice uh, finish. Uh, it kind of almost has a metallic finish, even though it, there is no metal in it. Uh, it's just got that kind of gunmetal blue uh, sheen to it, uh, which is just really nice. And like I said, um, just has done a really nice job um, printing for me so thus far on a few prints. And like I jumped right in after calibration, like I said, and started printing these things off for my daughter. Uh, that, like I said, the Mandalorian will be a 10 I'm sorry, an 11 to 12 hour print, and uh, it seems to be doing just fine. So this wrap-up video is meant to be kind of an overall like impressions as well as kind of sum up our process. Um, before I get to the overall impressions of the printer, uh, this is a great uh, point or a great uh, point in the video to review the settings that I was able to get during my calibration process. And these will also be posted down in the comments on the video. Uh, just to note that some of these settings are different than what we found in our calibration tests uh, in the videos that came before this. Why is that? Because you're going to find too, as you begin to actually print with the settings uh, that you might have um, uh, for any printer, you're going to have to do a few, uh, a few modifications to what you're doing. It's just the nature of the beast. Everything that we do when we calibrate a machine like this uh, is subject to a host of variables that we can't, um, or as best we can try to, try to hold one particular, or you know, hold all the variables constant so that we can test one particular variable. It's just not the case with a mechanically moving uh, machine that that works with materials that are going to be different each day depending on the relative humidity, what's the temperature in the room, all kinds of these variables that we just cannot control. Uh, consistently and uh, uh, without like a lot of money and a lot of time and equipment. Um, so there are going to be some compromises and those compromises are going to play out in you having to do some things. Uh, right off the bat are having to play with some of these uh, settings. So right off the bat I will tell you that one thing we changed, I changed uh, and have decided not to use on this machine is linear advance. If you remember one of the, the latest videos, the last videos I did was on calibrating linear advance and we did the little box, uh, kind of the little set of hatch, hashed lines and we were looking for bulges and to, to, to see what was there. I will tell you that after that I tried to do a couple of calibration prints with, uh, with the K-factor or the linear advance uh, activated. I just could not get it to work well. 
on this printer. Um, I calibrated uh, retraction again, uh, to, and no matter what I did, I couldn't get the linear advance to work well. Um, so uh, honestly, I, I'm really sorry about that because I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, but I decided to just go with some uh, with regular settings, which means that in your slicer, I'm going to you know re-enable things like combing and coasting and and these other things that will help uh, minimize your retractions and minimize the stringing on the models. Um, but I did not. I'm not going to use linear advance. Uh, my gut feeling is that linear advance was just not uh, calibrating well, um, and that really the the values that we should be seeing are now are should be like 0.3 or below not the 0.4 and the 0.6 that, that, that I got a couple of times when I was trying to calibrate earlier in the video. So um, that's, well, linear advance is, is right out um, <laughs> for me anyway with the ER20 until something changes or unless something changes. Um, but as far as other settings, and again, these are down in the comments. Um, I, I left flow alone, if you remember, uh, decided to leave flow right about 100%. Um, the E-steps was right at 100, so I didn't have to do any changes in our firmware for calibrating E-steps. And I did it again, didn't do a second video, but I did it again here just a, a day or two ago just to double check, and sure enough, it's still extruding almost exactly 100 millimeters when you ask for 100 millimeters. So uh, I'm leaving the E-step calibration alone. Uh, for temperature for this matte blue, uh, navy blue uh, PLA. Um, again, just like we found in the video, right around 215 was correct. I have found, I'll move the camera just for a second, that 213, if I can get it to do it, 213 is what I'm printing at. Uh, it seems to give me the benefits of what 215 showed me on the temperature tower with being just a slight bit cooler, uh, which will help with uh, stringing. Um, other values, uh, if you remember from the videos, and again, uh, I, I, you, these are just starting points maybe if you decide that you want to go with that, uh, my starting points and tweak from there instead of doing through the calibration routine. Uh, retraction, uh, if you remember I, I calibrated 4 uh, millimeters of retraction at 40, um, uh, I'm sorry, at 45 millimeters per second. I'm actually printing this at 4.2 millimeters of retraction and uh, 55 millimeters per second on the speed. I'm trying to up the speed to a point that uh, it, it, it to, again help to reduce the stringing until it gets problematic. So I'm just kind of working little by little, stepping up the speed. And 4.2 seemed to print a little bit better. Um, uh, this was not part of the video, but I did another retraction tower. Um, and this middle, uh, this middle value was four, and this upper value was actually six. And although there was a single uh, string uh, set of or occurrence of stringing at the five level, I'm kind of moving it a little bit farther up, only because I know in a Bowden tube it takes a little bit more extraction to actually get the uh, filament to pull back. So I'm using 4.2 at 55 millimeters per second. All right, now for the retraction, the acceleration. If you remember, uh, we found uh, that 1100, uh, well, and well, 1100 was kind of the sweet spot. But um, I saw several posts online from some printers that were printing some fantastic models that they had slowed down their acceleration quite a bit to get better results, and and I had questions about that. So I I basically ran a couple more of those acceleration boxes, if you remember the acceleration and the junction deviation boxes, and I put a very wide range on the speeds. Um, and lo and behold, I found that there were two sweet spots for acceleration. Uh, one for me was at 600 uh, millimeters per second, and the other one was still at 1100 millimeters per second. So for those of you out there that are really, you, you want to like capture every second and make the fastest prints possible, I think 1100 will work just fine for the ER20. Um, it worked, for example, for these. And um, But right now I have both my print and travel acceleration set at 600. And, but I've left my, uh, I've left my retract acceleration and that retract acceleration uh, is from, and hopefully you can see where my finger's pointing, is actually for the extruder. I want that to pull back pretty quickly. It helps to prevent stringing. Uh, so I've left that at 1100. Um, my jerk, since, uh, or I, I'm sorry, the junction deviation, 
Um, and this is something that you should keep in mind that if you change acceleration, your junction deviation is going to change too. So sure enough, uh, I ran another one of those, or this time a junction deviation box with 600 as my, as my print acceleration and my junction deviation came out to be 0 0.09. That was instead of 0 0.05. There are actually some mathematical equations out there online for computing junction deviation at certain acceleration values. And sure enough, I was expecting something more between 0 .08 and 0 0.1. 0 0.09 worked well on the calibration print. So that's where I set my junction deviation. So that's it. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to print with now for a while and see what actually happens uh, with, uh, uh, as I, I begin to look at different filaments, I might actually have to uh, do some more compromises with those settings and come up with some, uh, some different values. But for right now, I think that'll actually get me uh, successful prints. Uh, things are working well, kind of as you can see in the video itself. Uh, the, the Mandalorian is looking really nice. There's just a couple of tiny wisps of string that, that, that are on different places, but that's to be expected, especially with this matte PLA. Um, like I showed you, I'm printing at 213 degrees, and my bed is at 65. Um, I didn't even use a raft, and, these are, and this model is just sitting with two feet. It's a very easy model to knock over, uh, which would cause the print to fail. Uh, but I just put uh, a number of brims uh, around there. I think 25, uh, 25 uh, layers, or not layers, but 25 different circles for the brim. And with the two brims, it's holding just fine. I like 60 to 65 uh, with this particular bed and this particular PLA. It seems to be nice and strong. Um, so let's close this out by talking about my impressions of the printer as a whole. Um, do I recommend, you know, bottom line up front, uh, the bluff is do I recommend this printer? Absolutely. Um, it, it's often on Amazon for $80 off its normal price, which means that you can get this printer for $220. For $220, you're getting a printer that has 2209, TMC 2209 drivers, um, that has uh, uh, auto bed leveling with the sensor integrated into the, uh, on the hot end. Um, it is, uh, there's, Really, you know, the, the the value you're getting for the money for this particular printer is pretty amazing um, with, uh, with the fact that it's costing well below uh, the market kind of norm for a 250 by 220 by 200 printer. You know, it's a small volume printer, um, but uh, definitely has plenty of usable volume. This is a really nice model that I'm printing here that's definitely not a small one. Um, and it seems to just do really well. A couple other things that I haven't even mentioned in the other videos that uh, are really, really kind of cool is that you've got um, a, a, unlike even the other Thinker series, uh, this is an all-metal extruder assembly here. This is, there's no plastic here, um, which is something that you would normally upgrade to, especially on these kind of uh, entry model uh, printers. Um, the, uh, the board... Uh, or the, the housing for the printer is all self-contained in such a small footprint. I mean, this is this is like the laptop of of small volume printers. And I, I I'll take that back. It's more like the the the, the what 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 do we call them? Pads, the iPad uh, of uh, of of small volume printers. It's just a super light in the sense that it's, it's something you can pick up and move pretty easily, um, and yet it seems to be built nicely and solidly. Uh, and I just, just, I'm just really impressed with what is being provided here at this price point. So definitely recommend the ER20. Uh, definitely recommend everyone's, uh, everyone's PLA. This matte navy blue is just a gorgeous uh, filament to use for your printing. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this series. Hope that, uh, um, that you'll be able to uh, perhaps join me if I get to test and calibrate another printer sometime soon in the future. And I will continue on the Area 1 page to post up my prints and, and things like that just for the sake of, uh, of sharing with the community and hopefully learning from everybody else. Thanks for joining me. Have a great, well, I guess uh, Memorial Day weekend's coming up, so have a great Memorial Day weekend and hopefully talk to you soon.